Okay, so I'm here today with a very special guest and I'm really looking forward to sharing some insights here. So I'll throw it over to you to introduce yourself, Alicia. Thank you so much, Ali. It's a pleasure to be here. Number one, thank you so much for inviting me to this space. Uh, we, we've got a little funny story where we've met together. So thank you, Tony Robbins, for the introduction to each other. And my name is Alicia Wade. I'm a life, business and leadership coach. I also do book mentoring. I was awarded Life Coach of the Year for 2020, also international best-selling author. Uh, I was Educator of the Year in 2013 for the practices and the pedagogy that I have done in early childhood education and care. I'm also a member for Zonta International Women, empowering women across the nation. And particularly in my town, I live in Harvey Bay, Queensland, and I'm also the president for the Queensland Women's Association here in Harvey Bay. And that's a little bit about me. I'm an ambassador for life. Uh, what I've realized is when you overcome darkness and come through, through the treacheries, you can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's what I like to show to people is that there is a silver lining and a light there. Mm, absolutely. And we're so lucky to have you here today. Now, I know um, part of this campaign is a little bit about a lived experience, right? So let's just start with the first question. What's one mental health tactic that you yourself have used in a time of need just that has helped support you? Fantastic question. And I'm so grateful to be in this space. And as I say, I'm grateful. Gratitude is one of those tactics and resources that have actually helped me through the most darkest days. I didn't realise how much of a profound effect it has on your neuro pathways within your brain. But when I've had a full, I had a full mental breakdown in, six years ago, six, seven years ago, where I lost everything, was going through a divorce, going through, uh, lost my six figure salary and I ended up with nothing. And I was like, what do I do? I felt like I was in a deep, dark hole. And if you were to describe it, it felt like I had boulders like crashing on me. So it was a very heavy feeling for me. And that's when I discovered the happiness uh, project and little did I know that I, I was doing gratitude in that journal. And then if we speed it up to three years ago, I actually created a gratitude journal and have published that and spread it around my networks and my community. And then I started to realise that it helped other people from dark times as well. One person in particular said, Alicia, I picked up your gratitude journal and I was seriously going to end my life. And it was thanks to your gratitude that I went, no, you know what, I'm not going to end it. So gratitude is one of those things where it's more than just saying it. It's actually a feeling and an embodiment. And a lot of people do the simple basics. That I'm grateful to have a house. I'm grateful for this. But if you can experience the events and put yourself back into those times or think of a compelling future where you feel gratitude, love and joy, that's going to help shape the way that you think and do. Because research and there's a lot of science around it you can't have a negative mindset and a positive mindset at the same time your brain cannot neurologically do that it doesn't have the capacity to do that and the more I go on this journey and the more people I interact with I start to realize how powerful this simple act and gesture is absolutely no, I, I hear you there. Gratitude is such a powerful mental state to be in. And it's something that we do need to remind ourselves just on a daily basis. Um, I, I do love that whole when you are in that state of, of gratitude, you can't necessarily also be in that state of some of the negative uh, emotions that do come up because they're counterintuitive to each other. Um, yes. So we have a lot of contacts in our network that are in the Melbourne lockdowns or Sydney lockdowns or Canberra lockdowns, you know, and some uh, are experiencing mental health issues for the first time and could be in that big eye of the storm of there's so much going on. Given that you've explained to us before that you've felt like you've been in a pretty deep space before, but you're now here where you are and you're full of gratitude. I can see it, I can feel it. <laughs> um, but what is our message of hope or insight that you can share with these people that may be struggling right now? 
What I always say, and I'm going to go back to gratitude because that's going to be the strong message in this conversation, is sometimes we live in an uncertain world and there's always going to be uncertainty around us. And so it's a matter of focusing on what you can control and what you can control is being grateful for the things that you have around you. So what you can control is, oh, I can go out for a walk today. I get to go for a walk rather than I can't do this and I can't do that. What can you get to do? I get to study a little bit more at home. I get to dance and have an awesome dance party at home. How can you flip it so a negative event can turn into a positive one and I guess um, over my background is early childhood education and care for 21 years so we've always had to use positive guidance and support for children turning those don'ts into cans like uh, for instance don't walk inside uh, don't run inside walk instead and so it's just a matter of switching that mindset okay we've got this negative frame that we've put on a sentence how can I reframe that to have a positive context to move forward rather than focusing on the negative and as I said and we've just said it positive and negatives don't work so what can you do it's even appreciating the little things around you We've grown in such a society where now you've got your mobile phone and you've got access to so much stuff that you just have to press a button and you get things like that. We still have that luxury of doing it. We've got Uber Eats, we've got this, we've got that, and things can get delivered to our house within an hour. And so appreciating those things that we still have access to is is remarkable and still amazing that we can still we still have access to so many resources and it's about accessing what we can access Mm -hmm. and what we can control in our parameters yeah for sure and I swear I had this conversation with you in one of the first times we connected but yeah our brain that prehistoric brain the fight or flight goes and scans for problems. Well, now it may not make sense in a modern day society. So we need to be able to, you know, zone in on those things that we can focus on and um, not necessarily let those minor things become problems, right? Exactly right, exactly right. Because what we can tend to happen is fall victim to our environment around us. And we can live in that story of victimhood But if you want to take responsibility and accountability for your emotions, well, think about the things that make you happy. What are the simple things that produce those endorphins, produce that dopamine that makes you happy? Is it reading a book? Is it doing meditation? Is it doing exercise? Is it, do you need to get a punching bag and stuff and just get that adrenaline pumping? There are things that you can do that it does not entail you getting out there. It's just, just about bringing in. And I have a great example. I do have a client down in Melbourne and we've been discussing and unpacking and brainstorming things that she can control in her environment that's going to make her feel happy and have a sense of enjoyment. So it's been restructuring her routine uh, because she was. most people are working at home. So it's ensuring that she does a bit of a dance. So she bought an Xbox to do dancing and look like, she doesn't care what she looks like because no one's watching her, which is even more of a positive. So if you don't want to go out there and dance in front of people, you can do it in your own home. Like we have the opportunity to do that or trying something new. Uh, Something that comes to mind when I did the happiness project And I kid you not, I I say that I, my early childhood, like working in early childhood education, I lived like a similar sort of COVID world where each room I had to sign in and out where I was going, even to toilet breaks to say where I was. If I left the premises, I would get a $5,000 fine for leaving the premises. Mm. So yes, um, I've been uh, in that sort of stress and regulated environment. So I have an understanding. I don't know exactly how people are feeling, but I have that understanding when I'm comparing, well, my work life used to be like that. It was nine to five at work and then at home, that's it. No traveling anywhere. And I was traveling two to three hours everywhere. So I was pretty much work home, that's it, stuck in my own little universe bubble. And so, What I tell people is to create that routine that's going to give them that happiness. And when I was going on this happiness journey, 
I wanted to try three things that were out of my comfort zone or something that I hadn't tried. So I started Googling things and seeing what's out there that I could do in my home or because I did have anxiety getting out there. I was 30 kilos heavier seven years ago. So I was scared that people were going to judge me. People were going to make fun of me. People were going to stare at me. I had all of these thoughts going through my mind with my mental health and well-being. And I just started to do things that were going to make me happy. Mm -hmm. So running, for instance, was one and walking and doing the small exercises, starting to eat better. And I started to notice that when I ate better, when I did that exercise, those two small steps help to the bigger picture of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So many wise tips along the way that you've just shared there with that story. So thank you. Now, um, I've actually literally come to my last question for you today. Um, this is a suicide prevention campaign. And uh, some people are choosing to share a little bit of information about this story. But what's most important is for those who have come from a lived experience, what we've found is there's sometimes some very pivotal, pivotal moments that happen, little gestures, or it could be that gift of support or that ear to, to, to lean on that has made a huge difference to be why they are here today. I'm wondering if you could just share any insight uh, from your own story that uh, with our participants here today. Yeah, sure thing. So one of the pivotal moments for me was um, I was a bit of a party go-getter. So I loved my good clubbing days and all of that sort of stuff. And I, I lived in a world of perfectionism. So I had this perfectionism mask that I would play and people pleasing. And then this other dark side, which was called self-sabotage. So if things didn't go perfect in my world, I would then go to the extremes and self-sabotage myself either on alcohol or drugs to the point I would blank out. And there was one pivotal, uh, one very profound experience where I was with this group of people and I was very drunk and I ended up smoking something, can't remember what it was, and the, and the smoke came out of my mouth and I came to conscious awareness and I went, oh, my God, I'm going to be gone after this. I was left in the toilet by myself and I didn't know whether I was going to live or whether I was going to die. And I felt like I was dying in that moment and I felt lonely and I was like, life should not feel this way. Mm -hmm. And I realised that the people that I was hanging around were not being supportive or loving to me. And I guess I, I needed to realise that I have such a loving family around me and I started to discover the five love languages and how people mm. express love. Um, being a survivor of domestic violence and bullying myself, I had a mantra, I hate the world and the world hates me. Mm. And um, I actually had a friend who died by suicide and her last words 14 days before she left this earth she said to me, Alicia, fight for your worth. You're worthy. You're a beautiful human being. And those words still go in my mindset on why I'm on my mission, why I'm on my journey, because she was a beautiful soul that didn't have to leave so early. She was only 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that, I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to fight for who I am. I know how worthy I am. And then when I started going on my personal development journey and helping people around me with the thoughts, with the um, how you feel, the way you look at yourself in the reflection of the mirror, I started to realise if I start looking after myself, I can look after others. When others start to look after themselves, they start to do that ripple effect. And I've been seeing it with hundreds of thousands of people now, mm. teenagers as well as adults and even um, the elderly as well. Um, teenage suicide is quite high in my town. Uh, I think we had 13, from, 13 die by suicide from November to June, which is way too many. And loneliness is a really big thing. And I realised I needed to start networking and communicating. Hiding in my bedroom isn't going to stop the loneliness. It's only just going to keep me in the bed. 
So I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to start networking with groups, whether that be online or offline, picking up the phone and saying to my friends, hey, I don't feel that good. And having a friend listen to you as well to say, hey, I need a bit of support. Can you listen to me? Those have been the key things to help me on this journey. And I hold a mastermind too, and I've had some very high executive people in the vicinity, and they too experiences experience those thought patterns. Mm. And it's about surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you, nurture you, and be vulnerable in those stages and go, hey, I'm here if you need any help, and just let it out. Yeah. Very profound. Thank you so much for your wisdom there. And I very much hope that some of those words do go out to those who may need to hear it right now. Um, Just finally, if anyone wants to stay in touch with you, how do they do that? Okay, to get in touch with me, I have uh, a couple of websites. I've got hbcoaching.com.au. I also have the gratitudemethod.com as well. You can get through t- in touch with me through there. I'm also on LinkedIn under Alicia Ann Wade, Facebook, Instagram. I'm under HB, uh, Harvey Bay Coaching, and I also have the Gratitude Method as well. So those are ways that you can get in touch with me. So if you want to private message me or reach out, pu- please, by all means, I'm happy to help out and support you. Brilliant. Thank you so much for your time today. And I'll make sure I drop some of those links in the chat box there. Really appreciate your insights there. Thank you.